I actually don't know what part of this you want to talk about. I don't know. Hello and welcome to Field Notes, and today I am joined by my friend and fellow geologist Drew, who also went to field camp with me. Today we're going to be talking about the camping part of field camp, and as you can see, we have some of our equipment set up that will be demonstrated later on in the video. So first we're going to talk about the kind of camping that you can expect on the trip. So for our field camp, we spend our entire time camping out of the van. Unless your camp says that you're actually going to be backpacking, that's pretty much what you can expect. Since we have the vans with us the entire time, you always have your gear nearby. So for the camping, we weren't camping in backcountry wilderness, we were at KOAs and other established campsites. Two or three of the campsites that we stayed at were considered primitive, which meant there weren't any bathroom facilities or potable water. But that's about as harsh as the camping ever got. So now we're going to go over some of the essential gear that I would strongly recommend would you strongly recommend? Yes. Yes. Yes, I would. All of this gear is Every piece of this. Is strongly recommended. Yeah. First and foremost, we're going to talk about a sleeping pad. Don't just get a foam pad. You're going to want a nice sleeping pad. The kind of sleeping pad that we both had was memory foam and air, and those were fairly common on the trip. When you're looking at sleeping pads, make sure that you look at the packed size. He had one that folded in half and then rolled up and was smaller than the sleeping bag itself. Yeah. My pad only rolled and was as big as the tent. Of course, when you're camping, you also want a sleeping bag. That you have to bring. <laughs> it was recommended to bring a sleeping bag that was rated to 20 degrees. Because the air is thinner up there, it's going to get a lot more cold than you expect at night. If you're like me and you think you probably are going to need a little extra warmth, bring an insert. The next basic piece of gear was something that I didn't have, but really wished I did after the first camping night. I brought a camping pillow. It is essentially just a collapsible memory foam pillow that rolls up nice and small so that you can put it in your pack. It's a lot more comfortable than a wadded up sweatshirt, which is what I use. Or a lot of people had all their dirty clothes in a pillowcase. Which also stunk. Yeah, so <laughs> you, you do smell. <laughs> Think about the that. The, the camping pillow is small enough that you can sacrifice that amount of space. Yes. And money. Yeah, it was, was it? I think it was $20. 20 bucks, it's worth it. So next we're gonna be talking about probably the most essential part, which would be the tent. We had our first camping nights three weeks in, so we all knew each other fairly well by that point, and everybody ended up sharing tents. This not only minimizes the amount of tents that you have to put up, but the hassle of finding all of your gear in a stuffed van. It also cuts down on the amount of space you're using up at the campsite. Because there's gonna be a teacher section and the teachers don't want you near them. They want to be over there, and you want to be over there, because you want to party. And the teachers always take the nicest campsites. They do. They, but they will, you will get the shit campsite. Okay. If there's shade, they, they get the it. shade. <laughs> so we obviously both had our own tent, but after the first night, which ended in a thunderstorm, we decided to only set one up. It was this one. That's mine. So I bought this tent specifically for field camp. I do a lot of camping, so I decided to kind of upgrade some of my gear. The tent I went with, it's the Marmont Limelight three-person tent. Now, I know it's a three-person, but it's really a two-person tent. So I looked around online and found a well-reviewed, semi-reasonably priced tent, and this one was $220. One of the benefits of this tent is it is really easy to set up. As you'll see, yeah. one pole. It was one giant X-shaped pole and made it so much easier to set up, especially with two people. So if you've been camping a lot, you might already have known of this fabulous invention, but this was pretty new to me. I'm used to tents with sleeves that you gotta kind of wiggle the tent poles through. This doesn't have sleeves. This is clips. That's the best invention in camping. <laughs> When you get to your campsites, it's probably going to be late and dark, and a thunderstorm will be like 10 minutes out, so you're going to have to do it quick. It actually rained a lot when we were camping, and we never had a problem with getting wet. If you've got a tent that you use a ton, use that one. Don't go out and buy a tent. I didn't. There are very few campsites where you actually spend more than one night, so you're going to set it up late that night and break it down early in the morning. If you have been camping at all, you know that you're not really supposed to have food or anything that smells in your tent. This is obviously true when you're out west. There's a lot of bears. So we had to keep everything in bear boxes, aka 
the van. Since you have the vans parked right there, the only thing you really need in your tent is your sleeping gear and possibly a change of clothes for the next day. Moving on to food, you also are gonna keep that all in the vans, obviously, because that's gonna be a major bear attractant. So because a lot of our camping was done in and around national parks, you're never really away from civilization. So food is readily available. So for us, we stopped at least once a day at a convenience store for food. On these stops, we were expected to get food for both breakfast and lunch. So what we did when we were camping for breakfast and lunch was a loaf of bread and a block of cheese. Kind of made our own lunchables, if you will. You get a hard cheese, like a mild cheddar, it's fine out even at you know, room temperature or hotter for a day or so. Because we're in civilization, dinner is pretty easy to come by. You're almost always given the option to actually go into town and get food from a restaurant. However, in these national park towns, Food tends to be pretty pricey because of the tourist industry. Yep. So if you want to save a little bit of money, you can typically buy something to eat at camp. That was recommended that we actually not bring cookware, so pots and pans and camp stoves were frowned upon. We ended up buying a cheap pot and started to get the freeze-dried camp meals. Like this. Now these aren't the cheapest thing to buy, but they are less expensive than going out to eat. Now it's recommended that these are two-person meals, but they're not really. <sighs> So be, a, be aware when you're looking at nutritional information, if you're trying to stay a little bit healthier, the sodium can obviously get up there really quick. However, these are really good. This yeah. one in particular is really good. These are Mountain House that are quite good. Another brand is Backpacker's Pantry, which is also quite good. As long as you have access to a fire or in some of the KOAs, actually electric stove tops, all you have to do is boil water and pour it into the bag. You don't even need something to eat it out of, just something to eat it with, so get forks too. Sometimes you're not gonna have the option to cook at camp because of burn bans. So there are gonna be times when you're going to need to go out to eat. This has kind of been our take on what we think is essential for successful camping at field camp. Don't forget to like if you liked it, subscribe if you would like to see more, and I will see you next time. I almost didn't bring a pad because I... It only fits two people. Comfortably. Probably it only like fits. five <laughs> if you were you know, really you friendly. Stacked on top of each other.